It's been five months since the referendum for Brexit. One of the big surprises in that vote came from the North East, where a large majority of people voted to leave the European Union. Do you feel sort of optimistic for the future I of do. Sunderland? Absolutely. Yeah. I do, I do. Okay. There's this expectation, I think, in London that people here are going to be really regretful and remorseful, as if you didn't know what you were voting exactly. for. Exactly. Which is actually we a bit did. of a We knew both sides of the argument, yeah. and we knew we listened to everything. Yeah. And the, really, the other side was really, really bad, wasn't it? We were all going to go to pot, weren't we? Yeah. Or a ditch isn't happening. So when Sunderland voted by a margin of 61.3% to leave the European Union, it surprised many outsiders who wondered if it was a case of turkeys voting for Christmas. The main reason for that view is over there. It's the Nissan plant. Nissan employs 7,000 people locally, with almost 40,000 UK jobs relying on the car company. It is the biggest single engine in the North East economy, and much of that comes from sales inside the European single market. The Brexit result caused a stir, with many wondering if Nissan could remain competitive. Yet Nissan surprised many by suddenly announcing it was not only going to stay in Sunderland, but was also going to build two new models here. For us, there was no reason not to invest in the plan because of the quality of the discussion we had with the British company. We've been showing Nissan and others that we are committed to getting the best possible deal. Nissan had managed to elicit a promise from government, the details of which remain secret, that the UK would remain in a competitive trading environment for Nissan post-Brexit. So where does all this turmoil leave the mood in the North East? We're on our way now to Middlesbrough to talk to AV Dawson, a logistics company which transports and delivers the steel used to make the Nissan cars. These are really big raindrops. Like George Osborne. <laughs> when you heard the referendum result, how did you feel? I was happy. And I suppose 60% of the country were happy as well. Ask, how did you vote in the referendum? I voted out. You voted out, I why? Did, yeah. I always thought the quality of work that we can produce in England is much greater than anywhere else. So mm. if they really want a top quality, they're not going to just go over a couple of quid. The main ones that are going up to Nissan are what they call full finish coils and that's what they press the, the shell of the car with. Oh really? So you can see door, door, boot of the car there. In, in the immediate aftermath of the referendum result, was there a knock-on effect for your business? Yeah, we saw that mostly in the construction sector where we had three businesses that were looking to work with us that pulled out overnight because a loss of confidence due to Brexit. Mm -hmm. It was scary really to see that happen quite so quickly. Are we talking of million, about millions of pounds of lost business in a couple of days after the vote? Absolutely, these 15-year these deals equate to substantial security and revenues into the business. On the one hand, isn't it, it's, it's alright for Nissan, they've got their deal, but you don't have a deal. Are you not still quite vulnerable? I think even if all Nissan have had is the ear of the government, and then recognising how significant a employer they, employer they are. That's a good thing and that's reassuring for Nissan and that's reassuring for us. So, has there been any moments where you thought, did I vote the right way? Leaving it, Brexit, they're going to make it very hard for us because I don't want other countries to follow in our footsteps and leave Europe. But I think in the, in the long run, everything will work out and we'll be better for it. It did make you feel like you, you counted this time round instead of just being another number so I'll carry on. Were you a little bit nervous nonetheless, say a month ago when the boss of Nissan said, you know, no guarantees that we stay unless we get some sort of compensation from the government? Well, don't you think they were kind of holding the government a ransom then, saying, if you don't give me this, we can go? So sort of a game of chicken kind of thing? Well, I think so, yeah. 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 Well, you were right in the end. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, yeah, the silly, yeah, so... So we're on our way to meet a Labour councillor called John Kelly, who defied his party line and voted to leave the European Union. Um, he represents uh, Washington North, which is home to the Gargantua Nissan plant. So you voted to leave the European Union? I did, yes. So you sort of voted against your party line? Yes. As a Labour politician, why? But Europe had become a, global, a symbol of globalisation, and I'm a local ward representative, and to me, I've got to represent the best interests of my ward. 
And I genuinely didn't feel that Europe was doing that for us anymore. Globalisation and the fact that people have been forgotten about in the race to make money and in the race for business to be what business is, that's what has an impact on my uh, residents. For a lot of outsiders, it's hard to understand how people living here in Washington would vote to leave the trading block that makes trading easier. My ward's one of the most deprived wards in the city of Sunderland, and we weren't seeing anything coming to us. So during the referendum campaign, the Brexiteers said that the Remainers were scaremongering. And it seems that they've perhaps been proved right, do you think? I think both sides are scaremongering. I think, no, I don't believe the government's written them a blank cheque. I think what will happen in the, in the future is there will be concessions made for infrastructure. Um, that will have an impact on the local community, but it's essential to keep Nissan working. The optimism of the Nissan deal is borne out by Leave voters on the streets of Sunderland Town Centre. When you were voting, was Nissan on your mind at all? As a big local employer, whether yeah, they would leave or...? it was, because my partner, he used to work for Nissan, well, my yeah. ex-partner used to work for Nissan, and he kind of, he was sort of said, oh, they would leave, but I didn't think they would ever leave, because it's such a big company in the North East. If they, lost, if they left, it would be like, 30,000 people would lose the job. Which way did you vote? I voted out. You voted out. Voted and how would you feel about that now? I'm still, I'm still, I'm still stand by. I made that decision. And I've got an answer to it if it is wrong. And uh, see, I'm not a politician. I've just worked all my life. Grafted. My partner's Filipino. <laughs> you know, I have a daughter. And it's not about kicking everybody out. It's control. I think it's control. This optimism must be music to the ears of the man who organised Sunderland's historic Brexit vote, local UKIP party chair Richard Elvin. You never saw a Remain supporter, you hardly ever saw a Remain poster, and that was the case wherever you went. And they just took it all for granted, and it came back to haunt them. People were pretty confident that Nissan were going nowhere, and they've been proved right yeah. now that Nissan is well, staying. Were willing but what they didn't want to be was bullied, you know, and I think this, this really came out in the North East. The more the North Easters were threatened, I think the more the majority of people dug their heels in. Nonetheless, were you very relieved that they were staying? Oh, of course, I was you know, absolutely delighted. I mean, it's nothing less than what the workforce here in Sunderland deserve. The, the, the area which gets the least amount of infrastructure investment in the whole of the UK is the North East. It's completely at the bottom of the league. So do you think that another positive outcome of the referendum could be that it's forced the government to make promises about improving infrastructure in the North East, which has been so badly neglected, as you pointed out? Yes, yes, and long may it continue. Of course, many in Sunderland are not happy about the Brexit result. But when was the last time infrastructure and jobs in the North East were top of the Prime Minister's to-do list? So since the referendum result, we've had a lot of people saying that it's the communities that voted strongest for Brexit which will be the ones that are hurt most by it. And yet in Sunderland, which some people may say had a lot to lose, the prevailing mood is one of optimism and vindication. For now at least. <laughs>